Okay, and I really, really want to focus on <coughs> Okay, so in, in this lab we'll have a look at digital certificates and how they are used for for trust So the lab should be here and we'll just open it up Okay, so before I start, uh, what I'll do is I'll just pull down the, the GitHub and to get the latest code and uh, we should be able to get our commands and source code here. But obviously you can copy and paste from your uh, from the from the PDF and from GitHub. Okay, so it's uh, unit six, and then we want to look in the lab to get our lab, and then in source code to see what our source code is. So the first part of the lab is just for us to, to look at uh, some certificates. I'll just do this here within Firefox rather than the VM. So we'll load up uh, Certificate 1. So Certificate 1, uh, we can see here the effective date is there. Uh, we use what's called an X500 uh, format to define the actual uh, name of the certificate. So this is the common name, the organizational name, uh, email address, uh, organization, location and uh, country is here okay so so that defines almost the, the structure it's an x500 structure that, that we have that defines the the name of the certificate and then this is our public key here we have our public key uh, algorithm type and there's the issuer gb lothian nowhere and so on Okay, so that uh, that defines who created the uh, the certificate, and in this case, it's a self-signed certificate. That's the base sixty-four. Okay, so then in the lab, you should be able to get uh, this. Should be all you. You should be able to get your your details for the certificate. And now, what we're going to do is to open up the zip file on the page. Here. And we'll have a quick look at the certificate. So it's a dot C E R. It's easier to do it within the VM, so it will just come over here and open up Firefox. And we should open it. Okay, so there's the certificate there. We can look at the details. So it's a uh, the expiry date on it. Uh, it's obviously expired. And uh, there's our subject name, and then there's the the issuer of the certificate. Uh, we can see here some uh, ev other uh, details such as the, the two fingerprints that we have on it there's the public key so we're using 1024-bit RSA key and you should be able to count that for the number of bytes but it should equal 1024 bits uh, there is our <coughs> signature for the signer so it's a SHA-1 RSA that uh, has signed this uh, 
the certificate so the issuer will sign it with their private key and we will prove it with our with their public key okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a connection with uh, uh, Microsoft here and to use an open SSL So at the start, we'll look at this in more detail in the next lab, but uh, at the start of the, the connection, we should be able to see the, uh, the subject on the certificate. And there is the issuer, okay, US Digicert and then Digicert Cloud Services. With X500, we start at the top level, the country, and then work down from there until we get to the common name. That differs from email, where we start from the common name and then work uh, the, the other way, and we end up with the country. X500 starts with the country identifier uh, and organization, common name, and, and so on. Okay, so that's the uh, certificate <coughs> that uh, Windows Live is actually uh, sending. This is what's called the certificate chain to make sure it's uh, trustworthy. But uh, we can see the subject and the issuer uh, here. So the next thing what to do is to go to this web page. Uh, so what happened was that in uh, July 2018, Google uh, uh, said that uh, any site that uh, didn't have a correct uh, digital certificate on the HTTPS would be marked as insecure. So we'll see, often see uh, something like this. So have a look at some of these websites and see if they're still uh, they still have problems. Uh, but if we pick off one here. We can see here that there is a problem already uh, with this one. And when we look at the certificate, uh, we should be able to find if we if we go to advanced that, that there's a problem on, on this site. Okay, so investigate uh, some of these uh, links and see if they're still uh, they still have problems with the uh, HTTPS. If you can, try and do it within Chrome. Now what we'll do is we'll go to SSL Labs and have a look. So if there's a site that you want to scan, you should be able to have a look here. These are the ones that have been recently scanned. Uh, A plus is excellent. Uh, B and A is very good, B not so good, and C bad, uh, and F is 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 pretty bad. A T means that the site uh, doesn't have a, a match between the site name and the name on the certificate. So have a look at uh, some of the sites that you had previously scanned and see if you can report back on your findings. A T rating, as I said, is that the certificate doesn't <coughs> match the actual name on the site. Okay, so go ahead and then uh, download uh, the uh, A2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and have a look at those certificates. So 2 looks like it's been self-signed. Now what to do is to download these files 
here. These are in a DER format. And we see we have an X five hundred X five oh nine format. And uh, we see that these now are the distributable uh, formats for our certificates. Okay, so just as before, uh, we have the details of the certificate, who actually issued it, uh, there should be a signature, and and so on. So the, all these ones here have been uh, exported in a, in a given format for us to view. So just let me extract. Okay, so you see that uh, actually it's a binary format that we have for for DER. But we can still see some of the details within inside uh, the actual certificate itself. And we can read the certificate itself with OpenSSL. So OpenSSL gives us a good way to be able to read the certificate, to read our DER uh, certificate, our binary certificate, and we should be able to see all the details, serial number, the public key, there's the modulus, remember the modulus is P times Q, and there, that's the public key of the site, uh, a security site, uh, there's its uh, name there, so the common name should match the actual site itself, there's how long it's valid for until the uh, 19th of October. It's a 2048-bit <coughs> RSA key, which is a uh, fairly standard uh, size. And this is our P times Q, if you remember our N. And then this is our E value that we use for RSA. Uh, there's a few different things in there. There's the uh, signature. Uh, for the, <coughs> the certificate, which has been signed by the issuer, in this case, Komodo. Okay, <coughs> so go ahead and, and see if you can actually read these uh, certificates here. Now what we'll do is we'll create our own certificate. So we'll just try here. And go to this link. Okay, so we can create our own certificate, hopefully. And it's there. It's created our key pair. And it's created as a certificate. We can now look at the SER file or the DER file that we've created. Uh, you can create your own details in there for how long it's been created for. So let's look at the SER file. There's the details, uh, expires in 100 days, I think. There's a common name and, and so on. Okay, 
So there's our public key. It's only 512 bits, which you obviously wouldn't use. Uh, but it's just really a, a little test from them. So now what we'll do is that uh, we'll, what you have is a code signing request. So the code signing request, so we as a company would generate a key pair. We would then give that to our uh, issuer, our root CA. The root CA, uh, we would issue a code a certificate signing request when they receive that, then they do the check that uh, it's valid and then they will return us back the, the certificates that, that we need for our site. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll generate <coughs> our 2K keys. So let's find, let's see if we can find the code. So this is going to generate uh, uh, our keys, which is ca.keys, into an output file. This takes a little minute, and we'll have a look at our keys, what they look like. This is our key pair. Okay, it says private key. It has both private key and the public key in there. So we wouldn't distribute that. So the next thing that we want to do is to create a self-signed CA certificate for the parent, for the root CA. So we're going to uh, uh, pass on our signing request to our root CA. So we'll just check that that's... So, creating our so say your key some state remember um, okay so that's created a CRT for us. So that's going to be the certificate of the root CA. So I'll just try and find where that is. So that's our certificate. So we're going to use that to be able to sign uh, for uh, my little corpse certificate. Okay, so what we've done here is we've created our My Global Corp certificate. So this is a trusted root CA and uh, it's valid for all 1826 days. Uh, and that's our new certificate. We've created a key pair for them, and then that's their certificate. 
what's going to happen now is we're going to get a, a certificate signing request from my little corp to my global corp they'll use their keys key our private key to be able to sign for uh, the certificate that's issued to my little corp i hope that makes sense so we'll we're now my little corp and we'll generate another key pair for them oops <coughs> So that's my little corpse keys. And now we're going to create a, co a certificate signing request from uh, our newly created, uh, well, it's called the subordinate uh, C, uh, uh, certificate authority, but it could just be for a company. Okay, so we'll just paste that. Okay, so we're ready to create our new website and we need a certificate on it. Then we've got to go and give our keys and ask for a, a, a certificate signing request. So now we'll say we're in the UK. <coughs> So we now have a code signing request. And so it says begin certificate request. So now what we've got to do is we've got to send that to my my global corp for them to sign it. So for this, uh, we're going to create a certificate here. It's going to be in the next 509 format. Uh, and the output is going to be a certificate.crt. Okay, so we're valid for 730 days. Uh, we're taking our co signing request. We take the CA's uh, uh, certificate and their keys and we sign it. Okay, so uh, we send the co signing request. It's then received by my corp. My corp take their certificate here and here and then we're going to create the certificate for my little cop to use uh, I think I might have created uh, have I created it in the right place oh, good okay so we now have hopefully a certificate <coughs> that's there so this certificate hopefully should be signed. <coughs> ah, I appreciate I didn't put in the details of, of, uh, of my uh, Global Corp, but you can see here. Uh, so this is the issuer. Remember, I issued it initially, and this is my little corp. So this I should have put in my Global Corp here well, when we were doing the issuing for the certificate. But you can see here now that we now have a certificate. So this is the way that that it works. Okay, so it works by the root CE creates their key pair, and then creates a certificate. Uh, then the subordinates uh, creates a key pair and then creates a certificate signing request that goes to uh, the root CA. The root CA adds their own keys and signs the certificate and then generates an X509 certificate and sends it back to my little corp and that's now their certificate. They would then ex uh, extract 
the public key from that and that would become a, a, a publicly distributable uh, certificate. <coughs> okay, so let's now look at uh, this other format that, that we have. case we're going to export it now in terms of not as an X509 certificate but as a PKCS12 uh, format. If I can just get this uh, in the right format. This time, look what happens. It's asking me for a password. So this uh, P12 format or PFX format allows us to put a password onto our certificate. Okay, so that that is now uh, formatted with a password. Uh, so if we try to open that file, then uh, it we it won't be allowed. So I'll convert that back. <coughs> convert it into DR format. PM. So if we need a PM format. So there's our, our nicely distributable uh, format for our certificate uh, that um, we, we can have uh, in, a, in a PM format. <coughs> for the next part, we'll, we'll take a code signing request, a certificate signing request, and we'll use a little bit of, uh, of code uh, to be a Python code to be able to interpret it, so it should give us all the details that we actually need. So let's see if we can get this to to work. So I think that's b zero seven the Python. That's it there. So we would take our code signing request and then paste in uh, our code in there, and then hopefully we can interpret that from there. Okay, so you can see there, <coughs> it's taken our code sign request. So what to do is to do the same for this one. <coughs> so you've got to go back and then you've got to go, go to your file again and then uh, copy and paste into there, remembering about your new lines. Edit. And so the problem that you have is that you have to go back in and, and copy and paste it all again, and uh, it should, should work okay. Okay, so go in and make sure that you get the new lines in as we had before. Uh, you paste it back in and then there needs to be a new line here. And so on. So you need to get it all lined up and set up. <coughs> what I'll do is I'll just paste it into here. Or this is just showing an example here. 
Okay, so that there's the diagram that we saw that, that uh, this is what we've just done there before. Uh, we generated our key pair, created a cosine request, we generated a key pair here, we generated our certificate, and then we used the certificate with the keys to be able to create, sign a certificate with the public and private key of the organization, and then we sent them back uh, the uh, certificate. Okay, so if you try out those ones, then hopefully you'll, you'll see the details of these cosine requests. We can also do the same with then, uh, rather than creating RSA keys, which are getting extremely large in places, we can also do the same process with elliptic curve. So there's many <laughs> different types of elliptic curve. Uh, this one, the 256 one, is the one that's used in Bitcoin and so on. So we can we can pick off uh, <coughs> elliptic curve methods from there. So what we'll do, hopefully you've seen that uh, elliptic curve methods are really efficient in creating the key pair. So that see how quickly that, that was. That's a 256-bit key, which is uh, equivalent to a 2 key, I say key. Uh, so that's generated our, our parameters. And we can look at the details of what we've created with this command here. And we can see that we have an A value of 0, B value of 7. There is our prime number uh, in there. And there is our generator point. OK, generator point. Uh, we have A value, B value, and there's the prime number. Now we can create our key pair. If we're happy with that. There, see, it's a lot smaller than uh, the RSA keys, and then we can uh, encrypt with a password. And we're going to encrypt with 128 bit CBC here uh, to make sure that our key, our private key, is protected in some way. So that's uh, giving us encrypted key. So you'll see here that there is a little header there that actually tells us what this is encrypted by. And then this gives us uh, the, the details of the encrypted key. If we can decrypt it. <coughs> now we'll create an output format, which is now distributable with a DER format. Okay, so we're taking our encrypted keys with our password on them and it becomes an output format and we have to put in our password. So now you can see that we have uh, elliptic curve uh, details there. And there's a little uh, uh, sign there that uh, shows that this is uh, protected. Okay, so if you have a look at cloud flares, site. Uh, Cloudflare are a great advocate of, uh, 
of improving security on, on the internet. And if we have a look here, and we should be able to see some of the details on there. It's elliptic curve DSA, and you should be able to have a look at the keys. Uh, and they are elliptic curve uh, points. So there's our, our base uh, private key. <coughs> uh, the, there's the public key value, and the private key is 256 bits, and the public key should be 512 bits because it's an XY uh, point. Okay, so have a look uh, now at uh, PFX files, which uh, should allow you to create uh, the uh, password password uh, protected files. Uh, we'll go on to the F part now. Let's see if we have our code. There we go. So this little program here goes through a number of uh, a number of passwords and it tries to open up the file with this p12 format if it gets an exception then it it, uh, it will uh, show here and then it'll try again until it actually finds it so in this way we can brute force the minute that we don't the, the time that we don't get an exception uh, we can actually say that we found the password which protects the certificate so just let me see if we've got uh, fred.pfx yeah, good. So what we'll do is we'll just download it from here. So these are a number of certificates. do is I'll just run that Python code Python code is F okay so it's tried different passwords ankle battery and it's finally found apples and then opened up <coughs> the certificate so if we go here and try to open up that same certificate, then that password should work now. Right. From here, and I think we found out it was apples. Okay, it's there. If I now try and open that up without the right password, I go for Napier. Doesn't work. Okay. So this little Python code allows you to be able to uh, uh, discover the password for the certificate. So that's a big problem because we have excellent encryption keys which are almost uncrackable, but then if we put on a simple password, we are massively re reducing the, the, uh, the security of our infrastructure. Okay, and then in the last part, 
uh, what you should be able to do is to set up your own uh, web server uh, with uh, your, your keys and uh, hopefully it will all work oops uh, just do, do the commands one at a time and you should be able to install uh, your keys into the, the site <coughs> and then access localhost and you should be able to view that your certificate has been set up. Okay, thank you.